Excuse me. Yes? Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and... I told you, I don't know it. I'm looking for a clown. Are you trying to be funny? No, I really am looking for a clown. There are no clowns here except you. Have you heard of a guy called Plantar? No, that name means nothing to me. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? No, I never saw him. Forget it. Excuse me? Yeah? Do you happen to know a guy named Khan? That ain't nobody I know. I'm sorry to be a burden on your brain. See you later. Not if you see me first. Excuse me? Yeah? Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? Is this a trick question? No, I simply asked if you recognized him. Okay then. No, I don't. See you later. Not if you see me first. The lobby was quiet, almost deserted. The sign listed the price of rooms, and boy were they expensive. The killer must have been earning a fat wad to pay for accommodation like this. Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman. A man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. 
Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket. I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. That doesn't necessarily make them gangsters. Are you here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. I needed to get away after Algie's funeral. I didn't realize you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not. He was my husband. I have to go, ma'am. Excuse me. Didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know a guy called Plantau? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm, uh, sure you have. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. Do you know a man named Plantau? No, monsieur. Thanks for your help, buddy. Bonjour, killer. Hi, it's George. I have the address of the killer's hotel. If you're going to pay him a visit, take care. Remember, that guy's a professional. Thanks. I'll be fine. The door was locked. The door was locked. The door was locked. No point in phoning that guy again.
It was a magnificent old Steinway piano. The figure of a sexless youth was frozen in mid-skip with a silly grin on its stone lips. I recognized the guy. It was the Nobel Prize winner from the country whose name I couldn't pronounce. Hmm, maybe not. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Flap. You bet! Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape! Nothing, Guido. Zilch! Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Round here, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flap. Excuse me. Yeah? Don't you think you have some explaining to do? Huh? I'm an American citizen and a bona fide visitor to your country. What the... You can't touch me up in the street and expect to get away with it. Get lost, creep. Excuse me. Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. I'd like to report an assault. Yes, Monsieur. Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Bon. I'll get them this time. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty-looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, monsieur. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown? He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. What are you going to do about Flap and Guido, Sergeant? I'm going to bust them, Monsieur. For years I have been hoping to pin something on that pair. Now's my chance. I'll show them. And the inspector. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks for taking me seriously. I'm only doing my duty, monsieur. Is Rosso here? 
Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, I do. One moment, monsieur. Stobart is here to see you, monsieur. Did he say what it was about? No, monsieur. Very well. Hi, Inspector. Remember me? But of course, Mr. Stobard. My mind is a well-ordered faculty. A mental classification system that's the envy of the Bibliothèque Nationale. No tricks, mark you, monsieur. Just exercise. Just as our muscles waste through inactivity, so our minds decay. But there is no need. If only people would learn to exercise their wits daily. If he was trying to impress me, it worked. He was pompous and patronizing, but he had style. Eh bien, if you called about the bombing, you're too late. Investigations have been closed, but I have been taken off the case. What about the murderer, the dead guy? It is out of my hands. What was that psycho detective business you did in the cafe? It is my theory that the passions evoked in violent crimes create ripples in the ether, invisible to all but the possessor of a highly developed and receptive mind. I'm impressed. Can you bend spoons, too? I didn't think a man of your obvious intelligence would stoop to mockery. I'm not mocking. I've had personal experience of the power of the mind. I used to get ignored at parties until I read a book that changed my life. Really? What was it called? Hypnotism for fun and profit. He looked at me as if I'd farted at a funeral. The power of mesmerism is a rare gift, not a party trick. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No. It's the face of a killer. The man who bombed the cafe? The photograph was taken soon after the explosion. He'd escaped through the sewers, leaving a trail of clues behind him. Circumstantial evidence, Stobard. None of it proves a thing. Don't you want to know what I found out about the killer? I told you, monsieur. I have washed my hands of the whole affair. Then I'll have to continue my investigations without your help. No. You must forget the business of the clown completely. Go back to being an ordinary tourist, Stobard. I found this tissue in the sewer. It would have been best if you'd left it there. Does this red nose mean anything to you? I'd imagine it means you have not given up your pursuit of the clown. You're absolutely right. Does this red nose... I'd imagine it means... You're absolutely right. Did you find out the ID of the guy who was killed in the explosion? I already knew who he was. Would you care to shake my hand, Inspector? Please don't be offended if I decline your offer, Stobard. The palms of my hands are particularly sensitive. You're not going to try any of that psychic interrogation on me, are you? Do you find the thought of my probing distasteful? Let's just say I'd rather you didn't. I've got more doubts than doubting Thomas when it comes to mysticism. Too bad. I think you would make an interesting subject under controlled regression. The day I let anyone mess with my mind hasn't dawned yet. So long, Inspector.
Hi. You're the guy who gave me the tip, aren't you? Huh? The racehorse. Salah Eddin. Oh. Yeah, but... I put every franc I had on that horse. Listen, I... My lifetime savings. Next month's rent. Everything. Oh, God. He won by three lengths. I'm a rich man. Call me Lucky George, the punter's friend. So how come you're still here? Oh, I'm not going to let my newfound wealth change me. Not one bit. I bought this hole, fittings and all. Now I can come and go as I please. No more clocking on or completion schedules. No foreman breathing down my neck. Thanks to you, I've found paradise. I'm getting a mushy feeling in my chest, but not half as mushy as your head. What do you want now? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Would you like to shake hands with me? No, I wouldn't. One of the real pleasures of being rich is not having to be polite. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you. What now, monsieur? I've just been manhandled by a gorilla. Yes? I do not see any signs of a gorilla. No, not a real gorilla. It was a guy who looked like a gorilla. It happened right out front of this building. Let me get this quite clear. Are you complaining or bragging? I want to know what you're going to do about it. The scrawny one has a gun. I suggest you contact the police. Can't you do anything about them? What goes on in the streets of Paris is hardly my responsibility. Aren't you concerned that your guests are being intimidated by gangsters? No one else has complained, monsieur. 
Did they steal anything from you? Well, no. They didn't find what they were looking for. What was that? I don't know. I don't think they did either. I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He was secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks for your help, buddy. Hello again. May I shake you by the hand? I do not shake the hands of imperialist dogs. Now that's a real bad attitude problem you've got there. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marx and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear, with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? That gangster I told you about? He went through my pockets just now. Good heavens! One never knows what to expect in foreign parts. Thank you for the warning, young man. I shall hide my credit cards in my underwear. I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. A wild romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton chef. I must say I was disappointed with his cock van Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Sturbot. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. I couldn't really miss. It was just as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight. Romantic music tinkling across the room. And then, a stranger's glance. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk chappy. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling, positive. I wonder what they were. 
obviously something of great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantow's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. I have to go, ma'am.